everybody. Welcome to the Sharp Tongue Podcast. I am your girl and your host, Jessie Mae Peluso. I am very, 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 very excited to be chatting with this fella who I started talking to probably two years ago. We opened up a conversation about Alzheimer's and what his work is pertaining to that and uh, a company that he is working on. Actually, they have already done amazing groundbreaking work within neurodegenerative diseases and anything that has to do with injuries and improving your body and just your overall capacity and well-being. It's it's something that's very interesting to me and I wanted to mix it up a little bit on the podcast and bring you guys some information about a disease that has affected me personally and give you a little bit of perspective and some hope and solutions. So please welcome Mr. Mike Alexander. How are you? Good. How are you? I even get like a backstage applause. Did you hear it? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Super excited it to be is, here. I know it's really nice to meet you. Uh, t- tell us. I, I really want to dig into BioX Cellulator. Cell Cell Cellulator. Cell Cellerator. BioX Cell. Accelerator. It's a mouthful and it's a head full. <laughs> it is. It's a lot. It's a lot. And you've, how long have you had this company? Because I feel like when we first started talking, um, I feel like it was somewhat newer in the sense that things were starting to roll forward with getting it out in, into the public's eye and, and, and getting people um, informed about it. Yeah. So I think you and I first connected maybe two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, or a little earlier than that. Um, we've been open now for probably three and a half, four years. Yeah. Almost. Maybe a little bit longer. The process of getting started, and as we get into it, we'll talk about that, it was a, a little bit different than maybe a company in the United States because we're an offshore facility. Um, and there was some time that took for the lead up to having that facility open. So, um, and tell everybody what, what you specialize in. Yeah, so bioaccelerator, we specialize in cell therapy. So our patients visit us to um, for regenerative services for autoimmune, for things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, TBI. Uh, we have spinal cord patients, and we have people who just are in general interested in anti-aging, uh, staying healthy, uh, using advanced medicine, maybe not as happy with Western medicine necessarily, and they feel like there's an alternative to being maybe cut open for their spine or back or disc. Um, it's an advanced, it's also an experimental therapy. Um, at the end of the day, it is used in the U.S., but at the level that we use it, um, it's not um, necessarily approved inside of the United States, and we can chat about that. And why is, that, why is stem cell therapy so limited right now, in your professional opinion, if you could say, without the government shooting a um, laser beam in the middle of your forehead? <laughs> I'm sure that that's not there already. I feel like, honestly, I feel like it's a very risky industry to be in. Not in the sense of the, I'm sure there's risks all around. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. It's, it is a little bit risky, but um, the reason it's not here is because in overseas and out of the country, we can do things called expanding of cells, um, which falls underneath the manipulation of cells act within the US FDA, which doesn't allow us, you know, to take any cells and, and duplicate them, cloning make a simple term right and and, and growing and and making them more unfortunately you can only get so many cells from the human body in the way that they do in the u.s and overseas or in our case in colombia where we're located we're able to do that science at the highest level and it's the efficacy of it is such so much higher um outside but the u.s i think is and on top of that i mean let's be honest uh, there's a lot of hands in the pot in the united states it's a bit it's a business (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm so, you know, I'm a physiologist in, in my trade. Um, I'm, I'm a, that's my background. I'm an exercise physiologist and um, I, I have an emphasis in healthcare and I've studied the system and there's a lot of good things that we do. Um, there's a lot of good things that we do in the United States and a lot of talented people. Yeah, there are. We do have a really good base. I think we have amazing hospitals and doctors who are leading in their field. I definitely, it's, it's such a, it's such a um, balanced field in that sense that there's a lot of corruption, but there's also very talented individuals. Yeah, but we're not very progressive. No, we're not. We're not very progressive. It's, it's a shame. Um, we're not. And, and this is a very progressive science. 
Um, it's an impactful science. I think it would hurt, to be honest with you, some people's pocketbooks as far as the uh, economy goes and pharmaceuticals. And I'm not ashamed to say it. You know, I'm okay with upending that a little bit. It's the, the world we live in. Um, but and do you think that's why? Do you think it's why that um, one of the reasons why that s stem cell therapy is so limited here because of its efficacious uh, approach to all sorts of ailments and yeah, I, mean, I just said a big, big think, word for you. It was a big word. You used a big word, but I'm just going to nod because I'm yeah. nodding. <laughs> um, I know you have a degree, people. but I'm using really big words. No, no, no. Nod works well for me. <laughs> Trust me, I'm good with that. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think that um, it would definitely upend a lot of what's going on in the United States. Um, you know, you have an old rule that's been around forever. Um, I just think there's, it's progressive. You know, I'll look at the things that we do from – um, with marijuana, right? And, and, and I the areas do, I, of all things I medicine. do with it all day, every day. Right. And, and look, that's why I love, that's why I love reaching out to you. Like that was, it, there was, there was no, ha there was no aha. Like, let's just randomly reach out to this person. Like I'm a little smart. Like I take credit for a few things. Like you were yeah. purpose. Well, I think marijuana definitely, I see like it, it weaves into this, um, therapy. It definitely. It has, all, it's alternative. It does. And, and not to take away from the fact that there are stem cell therapies here in the United States. There are. Um, and, and there's physicians and facilities that do it. Uh, typically, it's going to be bone marrow. Uh, it's going to be maybe um, fat derived. So they, they you know, they take there's, it's the whole procedure just to get to that piece, um, which is allowable because the United States allows you to have your own cells put back into your body. So that so our version of stem cell therapy compared to other countries that have more access and more ability to perform that is less effective because we can't go as deep into the therapy. Yeah, and I'll give you some science, simple science. Simple give me some science. science. I love science. Yeah, simple science. Simple science works well. Let me adjust my screen a little bit. Um, Perfect. So we we use what's called mesenchymal stem cells. Mesenchymal stem cells come from Wharton jelly. Wharton oh, jelly. Whale? Yeah. <laughs> no, not exactly. But you could think so. Wharton <laughs> jelly is the inner lining of the umbilical cord. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. And it gets a little bit tricky from there. Um, now, this is where the disclaimer, <laughs> this is where the disclaimer comes in. Because as soon as I mention umbilical cord, what's the first thing you think of? I mean, I think of a baby in a baby's life. Yeah, right. But I also and, think and of life and the source of life and very dense and probably extremely bioavailable nutrients and things for the body. And you're not a scientist? No, I'm just a nerd. Yeah, it works. Like, that's a good explanation. It's better than I could have probably given. <laughs> you're a charmer. You're a charmer, you're Mark. A charmer, Mark. Charmer. I said Mark. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> okay. I mean, if it's Wahlberg, we're good. Like, <laughs> um, no, I think what's, I think, that's where, you know, a lot of people get, oh my gosh. And we use the biologic from the stem cell, or we guess where we get our stem cells from. We get them from the mesenchymal, the Wharton jelly. It comes from the umbilical cord, which comes from a donor program in Medellin that is highly regulated that we have to work. Um, our scientists, our doctors have to go and, and get the biologic from the hospital. And we have restrictions and we have stipulations, healthy born babies, healthy mothers, non-smokers, uh, drinkers, all these things that we play into as far as making sure that what we're using for our stem cells to cultivate, to culture them is um, from healthy. We don't want, I want nothing to do with, and nor will I ever put this company in a position to be involved in embryonic, which is the stuff you've heard about in the 1990s. And it's, it's okay, we're not baby killers, but that's, people that's like freak out when I say fiction. It. Yeah, they freak out. They're like, oh my God. I'm like, look, I'm not trying to be, but I, I'll be straight. I'll shoot straight with you. Like we're not baby killers. That's not the world that we live in. We want nothing to do with it. We never have wanted anything to do with it, but the closest you can get to life is to be at the beginning of life itself. And that's where life is. Um, and so we can get a highly potent stem cell, which is called mesenchymal from that Wharton jelly. And that Wharton jelly allows us to provide our patients with a very high level standard of stem cell that's different than the U S as well as the fact that we can culture it, which means we can, we can grow it. So in the U.S., you might get, you know, from your own bone mineral fat, maybe, you know, say a million cells, you know, that you get administered here in the U.S. And on average, our, our patients are anywhere between 100 and 250 million. 
cells. And how do those, do the cells, is there um, multiple phases of regeneration within one um, application? Like, how does it work? Like, is it like a, in its own way, are the stem cells constantly regenerating or is it something that has to be um, re-upped? Yeah, so... And to do the to do this any justice, it, the the one stem cell can turn into a billion stem cells. A brand new stem cell can turn into a billion stem cells over the course of thirty days. Wow! Yeah, it, it's pretty amazing. And and stem cells, like any other cell, they're only in your body for a certain amount of time. And what happens? Like, does your body does it come out in your poop? Yeah, well, I wouldn't say poop, but yeah, I mean, it, it excretes. Um, it dies off. It becomes like any other cell, you know, like your skin. A follicle that just kind of, you know, it sheds itself. Sloths off. Know, it sloths off. Sloths um, off. But what's really cool about it is, is it when you take older stem cells, stem cells that are from your own body, you're not talking about cells that could possibly replicate like that over time. Right. You're talking about cells who are slower, who are older, who have less, are less inclined. It's doesn't. It's nothing against the person we, you take them from. It's just realizing that, oh my gosh, you're uh, older, and those stem cells are going to react as if they were an older cell themselves. So taking a brand new zero level cell and putting it into the human body gets you a brand new kind of reaction. And if you think about when you were like, you know, eight years old and you hurt yourself and, you know, twisted an ankle. Yeah. Right. That's You're where that healed. comes from. Oh, I mean, I get a chimple now and it's on my chin for like two months. And I know that's like a oh, minor right? situation, but it's just a vain explanation of a scar taking a really long time. What, it's an what, um, <laughs> It's annoying. You don't have me right but, now, though, so you look great. I, I put, I, I shellacked makeup on for this, Did just you? for this. I, I covered all my flaws. <laughs> COVID style. COVID, yeah, I kept it COVID cute for the podcast. Well, when, um, it's a, when it's a two-year-long courting period to get yes. your attention, yep. I figured I should kind of bring some A game. I don't have a lot of game anymore, but at least I could bring something. I take my time. I take my time courting my scientist and my gentleman. Fair enough. Did you, would you say like um, s possible side effects? Like what are some of the worst side effects of stem cell therapy that you've seen in your career? I mean, truthfully, there's not a lot of side effects. Uh, so it is like things. marijuana. <laughs> right? Look, see, we're going to bring it all the way back. Like, we're I'm just trying to understand why it's not readily available here because I've heard a lot about it. I've, you know, when my father was sick, I was really, you know, just sad that it wasn't something, even just getting CBD for him was a three month process. And the idea of stem cell therapy seemed so foreign and distant that it was a frustrating thing to know that it's something that's effective and limited. So in my mind, I always try and understand why not. And and I understand the business side and, and you know, the scientific side if there aren't a lot of side effects it just seems strange to me like if there aren't is, is there any side effect to it that you've seen that may, maybe it's just not working a couple things well look, i tell people all the time there's a bit of a crapshoot with stem cells and how well it's going to work a lot of our patients um we predominantly see them be healthy in the areas that they come down for so if it's an autoimmune disorder or if it's, you know, shoulder or joint issue, which you'll see a lot of people who just over time deteriorate and they need to, they want to feel better, right? They, they have issues with their, a lot of spine, disc, back kind of things where it's immediate results. Other people, sometimes it takes time. It takes, the body has to reset itself to heal. Um, where the side effects can come in is people tend to, can have, again, scary to say in today's world, because if you snivel the wrong direction, you're, you might have COVID-19. Oh yeah. Coronavirus. Yeah. Like exactly. And for me, it's like, Hey, you might have some flu symptoms then all hell breaks loose. And you're like, no, 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 no. It's just because we give you, we have a process, not just a, a shot or just not an IV. We, we really did dive into the idea that we wanted our people to experience and, and bioaccelerator, as I mentioned before, is not located in the U S we do all of our treatments. Our corporate offices are in Phoenix, but we do all of our treatments in Medellin, Colombia. Um, and we don't want people to just visit to, okay, get a shot and then have a nice day. That happens in other locations. We, you come in for a full week with us, and one of those is biologics and, and vitamins and mineral drips and things like that that the body might not be prepared for all the time. But then we do the stem cell injections as well. We do all that. And your body can get some flu-like, maybe cold or headache or symptoms like that, which, again, like I said, can be kind of scary um, today's world. 
But at the end of the day, we've never had anybody who's had any adverse effect from stem cells. When you're doing things like into the joint lines, right? When you're doing things into your, yeah, right, into your shoulders, ah. like and back and neck, there can be discomfort. It's you increase the joint with, you know, it's like if you ever hurt your knee before and it, you couldn't walk, and that's just excess fluid built up in the knee. It's protecting itself. Well, now you purposely are putting a bunch of fluid in there with cells in it and everything to, you're going to get that same kind of, so you can get some, you know, some inflammation and some pain a little bit, but never lasts more than, you know, either an evening or in you know, 24 hours. But so now you come into the confusing question of why the hell isn't it available? I'm still, I'm still at a loss. Like what, what ailments have you seen that the stem cell therapy heals the quickest? Um, so it's funny, it varies a lot. So a lot of people, well, if I take it out of autoimmune to start out with, because all autoimmune is a bit of a tricky space um, because everybody's different. And we realize that we're all different. It's the same thing with Alzheimer's, it's the same thing with Parkinson's, it's the same thing with everything. Like everybody's different. Biologically, um, you don't know how people are going to react to things. Um, but a lot of times people's um, success comes reasonably quickly with our treatments. Um, the ones that typically don't see treatment, like the autoimmune, like joints are almost immediate. Um, wow. Within 60 days, they're 100% back to, and, and I say immediate, we're talking, we're not talking like overnight times. We're talking, you know, 60, 90 days. In the span of, a, of the medical industry. Yeah, in a reasonable amount of time, I would think, compared to what they've faced with pain. We really do work really hard about, we want everybody to be as healthy as possible. Um, we want patients who have severe disorders to just maybe live a better life. I mean, for everybody else, it's like, we want to see the miracle of a person walking who's a paraplegic. That's not the, the sketchy part of what we do. We don't expect anybody to walk if they're a paraplegic. Because we, we would love to see it happen. We have the best interest in your mind to do that. But some of our people, if they can just get off the colostomy bag, if they could wiggle their toe, if they could feel their kid put their hand on their leg, that's important to them. And that's what's important to us. Um, for a lot of skeptics or other people out there, they're like, well, you didn't make them walk on water. Yep, only heard of one person that did that, and I'm still trying to figure out if that happened. Yeah, try, we're trying to find that guy. Everyone's looking for that guy every day and every every piece of toast. Right? Like, I got a cloud outside right now in Phoenix. Pretty sure. <laughs> Pretty sure. And I would imagine that someone's individual, as you mentioned, like their individual health has a huge factor on the effectiveness of the treatment as well. Like, do you find people who come in with, say, a shoulder injury, that if they are smokers and eat unhealthy, does that play a factor in the quality and ability of the stem cell therapy to work? Yeah, um, I think as a professional and, and anybody who's ever around health, that's one thing you just realize, you know, the healthier you are, you go into a situation. It's the same kind of aspect. If you go into heart surgery or shoulder surgery in the US, they're going to be like, hey, before you go in, try to lose 30 pounds. I mean, right. for every doctor's outside dinner, and I've heard that it's, it's almost a repetitive thing. They hey, lose this or gain this or try to do this better or don't do that. So yeah, how healthy you are. And it's one of the we implemented. So we have a, a new on staff with us. It's somebody that every one of our patients sees a nutritionist. Um, it's on us. It's not on them. It's, you know, it's, hey, we, we want you to be healthy. We have an anti-inflammatory diet plan that we follow. We have a very smart young lady who runs it. We have a staff member who's also heavy into nutrition that really helps out with those things. And we try to provide them with a plan so that they can help with their diet and then the exercise. So a lot of it is stuff that people have heard over and over again. One area that's different is that when you're going out outside of the country, you probably may be spending out of your own pocket most likely. And so it's a very hefty do and they seem to stick by the protocol because they're like, I'm spending a lot of money. Like I want the, I want the results of this. Um, so it's really important that you do come into it healthy. Um, and if you aren't, we've had people with results as well. Some people can't get healthy without our, without our help. Right. And that's what we understand. We're like, we get it. Like, you're injured. We need to get you healthy so you can get back to your normal life. Um, it's one of the reasons I really love working with, you know, when I started building conversations with like you, people of influence, people who, who have a voice, who are out there, who have a pattern of success in what they do. One of the things I looked at was how, how can I do that, but also get the extremes? How can I go out and meet the people that are in the world of extreme? <laughs> Um, it's, it's not a happen circumstance. You see a lot of athletes come through our facility because really? as, a phys as a physiologist, I know exactly the extreme that those individuals put their body through. 
And if I can back that out, the guy who was, you know, a high school tennis player who has issues with his elbow and doesn't play anymore, but he sees Andre Agassi or somebody else at our facility, the overuse by that individual for a full lifetime, can't you imagine that you're going to get healthy if they get healthy? Because they're the ones that put the extreme, my fighters, CTE, things like that, that they're worried about. I purposely went after those people because I want the extreme to heal. If I can extreme heal the extreme, then the individuals who don't put themselves in a world of extreme should see the same, if not better results, because maybe they haven't had it over time or longer. And that's the reason why we have so many people of influence, you know, and athletes, because, you know, I, I have somebody tell no, that we don't want, we don't need to really treat you because I, it doesn't fit into what I need to have for my patients down the line, my everyday patients who I need to treat. I think it's a smart approach. You're basically going after the best and the worst simultaneously to show the ability for this to work for people. And in the process of the actual therapy, how many, like, say, say I tore my ACL and it's totally fucked and you know, I'm healthy as I am now. I eat pretty clean smoothies every day. I smoke weed every day. Allegedly, oh, fuck it. I'm in a, I'm in a legal state. I smoke weed every day. Um, I exercise. <laughs> I'm very, very healthy. Say I tear my ACL. How many sessions, like on average, do you think it would take for someone like me, if you just had to speculate for me to see a result? So there's going to be two pieces to that. The first thing is going to be, um, you're going to have surgery to repair your ACL. Right. It is what it is. This isn't a miracle cure. Like you can't just inject and it. Whoop, it's like the movies that doesn't work. You're going to have that surgery and you're going to go through some of your rehab to get healthy where ACL issues come in is people tend to have a long lasting amount of anti-inflammatory issues when they, when they hurt their knee. Um, why that's such a challenge for people is, you know, they go through all their other modalities to get healthy. So you may only need one treatment. Um, to get healthy with stem cells, to reduce the anti-inflammation, to help the menisci heal and help the bone and everything else become healthy. Um, now, if you're an extreme sport person, like, you know, yeah, you're a weekend warrior. Yeah, you, you do the whole week. You get healthy. You parkour. Awesome. <laughs> parkour, yeah. Or, or like you're a, a base jumper with a smaller parachute. Like whatever it is, like it's going to hurt you maybe possibly. So you might end up coming back for future services. Um, but most of our patients, we're, we're all about like, look, we want to get you here. We want to get you healthy the first time. It doesn't mean we don't want you to come back. Um, I definitely have athletes who are like, I'd like to come back a second time. Great. I have everyday people who are like, yeah, they're coming back a second and a third time. Cool. Love it. We would love to have people come one time and get a treatment. Spinal cord patients are different. But if you were an ACL, I'd say, look, you come down. Once you're healed after your surgery and everything is repaired, uh, we get an injection. We get it into your knee. We get you healthy. We get you healing. And then we get you back to probably better than normal um, because that's ACLs nowadays. That's how they work. You know, yeah. It used to be, it was, a, it was two years until you were playing anything again. Now it's, you got people coming back from ACLs in three months, which is unfathomable, but it happens. And it's wild that that's happening here and, the, and that we haven't still haven't um, implicated uh, or, or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, brought stem cell therapy into the regular regimen over here. Like the fact that we are able to have these technologies to advance ACL healing and, and surgeries. And we still haven't like <laughs> adopted stem cell therapy to go with that, to partner with those, you know, surgeries and therapies. It's, it's, it's wild in my mind. And for you, I'm sure you've seen an array of things like, you know, you mentioned CTEs and, um, uh, probably traumatic TBIs, traumatic brain injuries. What is one scenario or individual that had the worst scenario, the worst situation that you weren't sure if you, if it would work? I mean, obviously you probably, like you said, you want to go for the best and, and the most extreme. What was the most extreme that you've witnessed? I think, um, Probably Matt Hughes, as much as people know Matt's name from UFC and fighting, um, Matt is a TBI patient. Um, you know, I get to know these people very intimately. Like it's it's not um, there's their celebrity is not of interest in a lot of areas. There's a byproduct <laughs> of it. Nobody nobody everybody knows that. Like I get so many messages from people. You just have those people down there because they're superstars. And I'm like, 
you don't know anything about them, but sure, like that's a part of it. I, I appreciate, I'd be honest with people, but Matt's was bad. Matt was hit with a, hit by a train in his truck. Um, and uh, the, the, the amount of damage to his, his body, his brain um, was extensive. Uh, he recovered. He's a strong human being. He, tr- he was healthy when it happened. He's very, he recovered, but obviously there came a lot of challenges um, with that. And in conjunction with our treatment, with his physical therapy, with his just strong will, um, I think maybe two or three weeks ago, there was a video. We put it out, but so did the, the company who he works with as a PT, showed him you know, running um, from one end of a, of a fitness center to the other. Um, and to me, even when I met Matt two years ago uh, for the first time and had a discussion with him, and again, we're not by any means best friends, but you could tell that there was definitely something there that was different. And then to get notes, the, the small notes of things like from his staff saying, hey, guess what? Like he can remember his daily agenda. Wow. That, that, that Usually short term memory is. Yeah, he's like he, he's able to retain that. Um, that's really a big deal. Um, his that's a huge up deal. And yeah, going up and down stairs. Um, you know, traumatic brain injuries, they show up in a whole lot of different ways when they happen. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things. There's people who have minors and they have people who have majors. Uh, and I think that has been his ability to show that through that process and will, like it, it's not just stem cells, you know, it's no. not, this is not, it's, there's a lot of other things, you know, he's an advocate of CBD. He does, he does that. He's a, um, he's active. He knows he has to get out and do things. Those are all things that make it work. Um, so it's, it's a collaborative effort and, and that's been amazing. But I tell you what, what's so cool about it is the impact that Matt's story as an extreme has had on other people because we have a, I think he may be 12 or 13. Don't quote me on that exactly, but 12 or 13 year old who had a traumatic brain injury as well. What happened to him? Oh. Our accident. His name's oh. Soda Pop. And if we hadn't have met Matt, right. Um, and told Matt's story and he had taken a risk and, and worked with us, we wouldn't have been able to treat Soda Pop. Yeah, I see. I see the the need. They see they see the value in that because they trust Matt. They don't know Matt. They've never met Matt. But Matt put together a step challenge where there's a large staircase in our area down in Medellin that uh, it's Guadalupe. It's a big rock in the ground type of thing, and it's got a big staircase. And he walked it. This kid's goal is to walk it. Um, (sighs) It's just it's 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 a great story. Um, And and Matt continues to get the more he gets better. He'll never be the same. Like it'll, it'll never, it'll never be the same. It's, it's not how it's going to work. But life itself continues on, and he has to continue on with it. And this young man now has somebody to look up to in that same space. Um, I think that's a that's a huge extreme that we've had come through. Um, where the byproduct of having somebody like Matt Hughes, who's a big, well-known name, has done real well for somebody else, and, and that's really where that trickle-down effect comes. Uh, because I know that he's, you know, he's walking better. Um, you know, Soda Pop is, his speech is getting better. Um, and he's going to have a lifetime of learning to get better. Why do they call him Soda Pop? I've, I've really never asked. It's a nickname? A nickname. I'm sure it has <laughs> like something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, his, 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 his family is amazing. His mom and dad are amazing. Uh, is it? Um- we adopted him. Like he loves, he learned Spanish on one of his second or third trips. He learned some words in Spanish. I can't speak Spanish. And this kid who's faced way more things than I've had in life is learning Spanish phrases to say to our nurses while he's there. And I think that's just super cool. Like we, everybody who comes to BioAccelerator is family. It's just part of, of what our culture is. Um, we're not, I just tell people, I get in trouble for saying this. My CEO is probably going to kill me. But we, we don't want to be like everybody else. We want to be the fun uncle in this space. We want you to come and hang out. We want to be able to send you home with mom and dad. Uh, yep. But we also want to play outside the lines with you and be able to say, you know, we're going to help you in this area. And my doctors are amazing. Um, and, it, and that yields us the ability to have these great mm-hmm. conversations with our, with our, these kids and with these parents about them because we're going to treat them like family. So it is. I think it's a, a fresh approach to the medical industry to have a little light and energy and positivity and a you know family type of approach because so much of the traditional Western 
medical industry and, you know, health industry, insurance, all of that is so, um, it's so stagnant and it's just, it's a numbers game and the bedside manner is thrown to the wayside for the sake of getting those people through the conveyor belt system of, you know, the, the medical industry in our, in our healthcare. Um, yeah, it's, like, like, it's like this, right? Like my CEO said, don't wait, don't wear your hat, Mike. No, keep your hat on. Totally. Like, I'm like, I, I don't care. That's not me. This is, this is me. Like I, this is what we do. Like, yeah, we, you're chill. We're chill, I, dude. Wait. Like said, we, we'll get along great. Like we, this is, this is what we do. This is how we do it. Like, yeah. I don't, you don't want, <laughs> okay. I don't really Montel Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Right. That was, that was definitely Montel Jordan. I'm, I'm, you, you touched on an important aspect of, I think any, area of life where you struggle is the importance of willpower and people have having to search deep to generate that willpower. And, you know, willpower is almost like this intangible aspect of life that people don't realize is something that you can work on. And it's something that's very difficult to sustain, but it's like a muscle. It's, it's, it's something that can be built and it's something that can get stronger. And I think your approach to, um, how you have developed the stem cell therapy for you guys is a very important approach because when you reach for the extremes and you succeed, people who are hopeless find willpower because they discover hope in somebody else achieving their health through a worse scenario. So I think that that is, it's so um, inspiring and, and, I think something that from my viewpoint and my point of view in the world that I'm in, you know, I live in LA, you don't really witness that a lot in, in the, the medical industry. So I just think that that's, you know, it's an important aspect to what you do. Now talking about the most extreme, you know, one of the reasons why I was intrigued by what you do is because of also stem cell therapy being used in the treatment of dementia, Alzheimer's being the most common, um, form of dementia. What, what have you seen in that area and how, how is it, how, how, what is the success rate of that? Yeah. So I think the success rate is based on individuals in, in, in dementia or Alzheimer's because it's, it's such a degenerative and terrible disorder, disease. And you, you know this firsthand. It's not something that we want to see anybody that we care about go through. And we don't always want to see our patients to go, have to go through it as well. It's really hard. Um, earlier that you catch it, one is obviously better for the efficacy of stem cell, uh, the sooner you know. Um, one of the things about Alzheimer's is typically an elderly type of disorder. Now, it doesn't mean it always falls into that, but if we do medical numbers and you find that a certain age bracket is where people start to find that, um, where a stem cell really does have an impact is in the, the secondary and tertiary issues associated with dementia and Alzheimer's, where frailty becomes a challenge, um, where uh, the human body begins to shut down on its own or do things that it, it shouldn't be doing at the age of that individual. Um, memory retention can be impacted by stem cell um, quite drastically. Um, I think that everybody knows that it's not a cure for Alzheimer's. Um, I think it could be a part of it in the future. I, I think that the future is bright for that. If the right minds get together, um, you know, and figure out a way to make this work, quantity of cells that are administered have a huge impact. Um, where you administer them have a huge impact. We treat, um, any Alzheimer's patients, we treat them with the intent of telling them that we want to, we want to help with quality of life, right? Yeah. We want to make sure that um, you might be the one in a million that everything goes away and it's pretty, you're perfectly fine. You know, I put Alzheimer's up there with, with HIV and with cancer, right? And these areas that we just still are in, in flux of trying to figure out how do we heal this? Like, how do we have an actual cure? Um, our goal is to be able to say, look, if you have to manage with this for your life, then let's try to give you the best shot at living a healthy and long-term life. Um, and that's uh, some of the things that we have done. And, and so the, the success rate is, is differs between different people and different levels. I mean, you could be 365 days diagnosed and you could be 
nine years diagnosed and nine years could have a better result than 365. Um, that's a tricky place to play. And it's hard for us to tell people that. It, it's not fun to say, you know, it's, it's a crapshoot. We're not 100% sure, you know, go do this and maybe and maybe. And, but from our, as a physiologist, from us as a, as a medical professional, our goal is to be able to give you the best advice and the most successful return on the time that you spend with us. And um, we have definitely seen people who have felt better, lived better, um, had better lives, but have they reversed the, the process of, no, it, it hasn't happened. Nothing um, has, yeah, nothing is, no. that's the, the unfortunate uh, but aspect of it. it. What I think helps though is that we're, we're, we do what's intrathecal. So we do intrathecal therapies. So intrathecal is a um, simple term like a spinal tap. I was going to so we'll say, actually, through the spinal. Yeah, so we'll actually go in directly into the spinal column um, and inject the cells, um, which, yeah, right? Yeah, Is there any uh, anesthesia or anything, or are you just cold turkey just jamming that? No. So we we give you uh, – we don't put people completely under, um, but we have an anesthesiologist. One of the things about us that I love is that we have uh, – a lot of facilities who do what we do don't have specialists. They have like one doctor who started the facility, does all the work, and they're maybe just a, a general practitioner, and that's what they do. I don't trust that place. I need that dude to have breaks. I need that dude to have support. I need there to be a nail lady. I need there to be like a sauna. I need like an, I need a team. That's the only way I would go is if there were a team of specialists. There's a team. So we have, we have neurologists, we have orthopedics, we have GPs, we have nurses, we have, I mean, we have 27 staff members in Columbia um, that work. But what's important is that we do the spinal tap and we directly put the cells into the spinal column, which allows it to bypass the blood brain barrier, which is a big issue for a lot of people. Um, right. With with food, with medication, that, that blood barrier is a bitch, causes problems, inflammation, sugar. There's so many factors to the blood barrier. So see, you already know, and, and so does the rest of the, of the world, that that's kind of a challenge. Um, on our extremes, that's, we do do that. Um, now it doesn't mean that cells don't transition between the blood brain barrier, but you know, they're going to go out of it and trying to come in is a little bit hard and they'll get some that'll go in. But at the end of the day, that is an area where we think has a huge progression. That's where, what we did with Matt, um, we do with our TBI patients. Um, and I tell people that if there's an extreme that goes along with the brain and it's a traumatic brain injury, um, and this helps, there is nothing but upside to having the procedures done if you have Parkinson's or dementia or any of these other major debilitating neurological disorders. Um, there's nothing, there's, at the end of the day, it's what's really fun is to see is people's eyes light up with the opportunity for hope. I mean, the hope, hope is so much a part of um, the whole healing process, especially with people who our family members of people who have neurodegenerative diagnosis, you know, like Parkinson's or ALS or dementia, Alzheimer's, where it's just this gloomy diagnosis. The, the outlook is, is one, there's one outlook to it and there's minimal hope. And for my sister and I and my family dealing with my dad, as I said earlier, just to get him CBD was, an excruciating process that I just totally circumvented and brought CBD in my pocket into the hospital because I wasn't, I didn't need to fill out paperwork to, to get my father something that I know would, or at least hope would have some sort of effect. And, you know, my sister and I, I remember I put, we gave him some CBD and this was, he was, this was two weeks before he had passed, you know, the, um, death was already upon him. And you know, that slow process of someone shutting down is so painful to watch. And at that point, you just want, the only thing you want for your loved ones is comfort. If that's all you can give them, that is the baseline, that is everything. And it's, you'll do anything to give them that. And and there wasn't any hope because the system surrounding the treatment for Alzheimer's and, and dementia is so, it, it, you know, I mean, it's, there's so much that's unknown about the disease. So much of the approach is antiquated and the, the risk that they take, I feel is always going towards what can we make of this? It's it, the, the dollar, the bottom dollar is such a, um, 
driving force in, in the approach to treatment. So we were desperate and I brought the CBD in. My dad was very rigid and just so, he just looked so fucking uncomfortable. And we just, you know, I put a couple of the droplets under his tongue, probably a full um, dose, maybe a little bit extra because, you know, why not dose dad up? It's not like he's going to get stoned. I probably should have fucking got him stoned, but gave him some droplets and 15 minutes into it. I've never seen like a lot of miracles or things that I'd be like, holy shit. There's very few things. And I think that's what's so great about miracles. If they were plentiful, they wouldn't be so amazing. But this was one where it was so personal to me and and so, so much of a relief and, and hope. It created so much hope. Um, giving him those droplets and 15 minutes later, seeing him literally go from this to exhaling and relaxing. Like I, it, and that was the only time in the entire, you know, interim of, of the progress of, of, his, of his disease, did he ever look relaxed? And at that point, that's where you get some hope for it, those things sort of being implemented, that was a word I was looking for before, implemented into the process. And for something like stem cell, it's like you said earlier, it's not the cure. CBD is not the cure. Stem cell therapy isn't the cure, but it's an additive to the, to the full entree of therapies that can at least provide some comfort and some healing. Yeah. Yeah. We see a, you know, you and I have seen it in, in the world of medical marijuana or marijuana. You know, if you've ever, you know, if, if you face, I've never seen people change their direction or opinion on something so quickly than when they have a patient who, or a friend, a family member, who is, is all of a sudden has cancer and has it, to go through Doesn't cancer. it change? It's like, oh, and, well, and, whatever. Yep. They were, they were, they were dare all the way, right? Dare, dare, dare. Like, don't let your kid near that kid. That kid's parents are blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden their friend is, is sick and can't eat and, and it doesn't seem like themselves and they're doing everything they can and they find out they're smoking weed or they got this or that and all of a sudden they're normal. And I'm like, how is that a bad thing? How? Uh, it's the same thing. Yeah, it was the same thing we have with our patients who, you know, their doctors have told them, we're going to cut you open. We're going to fuse your back. And I'm like, that's, that's really just ending everything that you thought was mobility for yourself. I mean, you'll still be upright. You'll still but you're still going to have pain. Oh, and then they come down and they're like, I can't believe that a Western medicine physician told me that I was going to have to have it fused and I don't need that. Maybe someday down the, the line I don't, but I'm 42 years old. Like, why should I have my back fused at 42? And they come down, they walk away and never come back. And, and we hear the stories of them being healthy. Um, and then you have these de debilitating ailments. They, um, it, it gives people the opportunity to feel like maybe there is something out there and I implore everybody to explore outside of the U.S. for a lot of things. Why not? I mean, knowing what we know about our industries and our systems, knowing that for the most part, they're all businesses. Even the education system is, you know, rooted in a business approach. And I understand that. I'm not some extreme crazy liberal, nor am I some extreme crazy Republican or conservative. I understand the importance of both aspects, needing to have the business and also taking care of the people. But when it comes down to people having access to different alternative therapies and, and also giving them the choice. Isn't that what this country's built upon? Don't we pride ourselves in having choice and freedom and the ability to sort of live our lives a little bit more of an individualistic approach? And with stem cell therapy, I feel like the fact that it's still, still an overseas thing and and still not available. I mean, there's ketamine clinics popping up here. I'm like, let's get rid of, let's get rid of the, 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 the McDonald's. Let's get rid of the candy shops and not all of them, the ice cream shops and put in some ketamine clinics, put in some stem cell therapy clinics. I mean, maybe we should keep it all and let everybody still have the choice because I realized that that sounded kind of hypocritical. Like, you should have choice. I'm taking away the sugar. But, you know, at least having the option to you know, I think that, explore uh, it. What's gr what, what is great, and again, I have to be good with both sides of it. Like, I love the fact that we do have stem cell in the U.S. There are facilities that will administer it. There's, 
competitors that are here uh, at the level that they can do it. And they, they pushed it right to that edge, you know, right to where they know that, you know, the FDA and everybody else isn't going to shut them down, you know, wh whatever they can offer. Where we fall short is really offering the highest quality, you know, as a country that says we are the highest quality. Which We're the best. Clear. We're the fucking best, bro. You didn't hear? Yeah, right? Right? From the guy who's got his hat on backward. Like, you didn't fucking is, hear, bro? Yeah, like, what's the newsroom? Like, the first five minutes of the newsroom, I don't know if you ever saw that, where he said, you know, you're not the greatest country in the world. You're like, there's a lot of things we fall short on, and I'm sorry. Like, I wish that as a health professional, I could get behind all that. I don't have any pill guy in my pocket handing me dollar bills and says, hey, every time you mention my blah, 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 I'm going to pay you. Like, I'm out at the far end of the extreme trying to see if we can make a difference. And maybe it's a legacy of failure because we tried, but maybe at the same time, we change a couple lives. Um, we, we provide, and that's, you know, talking with you, talking with people of influence, people who are out there being able to just how quickly can we get the word out that maybe one, other countries have great opportunities for people if they want to go get a treatment like this. And two, that it can be a higher standard than what you've been taught growing up. What you've been taught is this is the greatest system ever, which fails you all the time. So why not look outside of that? And that being said, look, if people can do it here and they get great results. Awesome. Totally fine with it. We're not for everybody, but I think that the higher standards, the higher level, the things that like tumors or, or um, even some of our major issues that we have with back and spinal cord, um, you don't want to you don't want to subject yourself to any type of lower level, right? You, yeah. you got to go. I got to go all in and all all go, or <laughs> you you probably shouldn't do it. It's just and what that brings me to something I want to ask you. What would you say to somebody who hears Columbia, who hears uh, you know, alternative therapy, they're desperate, they need some help, but they're afraid because those two things might scare them because of their lack of knowledge or their lack of information on the fact that that's a, an opportunity for them. Someone who's scared, like they hear stem cell therapy in Colombia, like that can be scary and intimidating to some people. Oh, it's 100% the number one conversation we, we have um, with our patients. I think there's a there's a there's another side to the reason that we kind of built it the way we built it around our culture. You know, you have Henry Cejudo's, you have the TJ Dillashaw's, you have some other people that we don't talk about who visit, who are very recognizable, to be honest with you, that are willing to go and chuck. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Yeah, Tom isn't one of mine. I've, I've tried to get Tom to go. Kim Kardashian in her butthole. Stem cells in her butthole. Uh, yeah, yeah, right? Come on. Like, I got that. I'll, we'll offer it. Um, I think that Columbia is not narcos. Um, which is a funny thing. <laughs> I think that might need to be the title. Right? That might be what we, yeah, good, good point. Um, <laughs> I might have to. <laughs> so it's funny. So the, one of the directors for that show has, has, is a, is a uh, patient, um, hasn't gone down yet, but will the, the whole, everything kind of got, sh we're kind of on pause right now with all the world's travel, right? We're still, we have patients, but we're still waiting on Columbia travel to open. Um, but he's like, yeah, he goes, Probably the first 35 minutes of the first episode is real. The rest of it, we had to kind of make up as we were going. And I'm like, if people knew that, they'd have less issues with going to Columbia. Yeah. Here's what I'll tell you about Columbia. Columbia has the sweetest people. They were caught in the worst situation. Simple as that. They, they wanted nothing to do with it. They had no power to fight against it. They were, by all intents and purposes, held at their own, without their own abilities to get away from what they were sounds and, familiar and, yeah it does sound very familiar and so they've i have never i think i've had more people who just are like i can't believe how amazing that experience was and look medical tourism has become very popular with people and, and um columbia i think is one of the places in the world that you should have to go and visit it's it's just it's beautiful food's amazing people are amazing again staff our staff is amazing but i think everybody that we've met we we take people on tours of the, the graffiti and some of the areas that are there and they get to meet some of the culture and they just fall in love with it. Um, and, and I think being afraid in today's world of adventure is, is, is sucks. It's an unfortunate side effect of our current state and the current state of the global world, you know, the current global issue we're in the middle of. I think everyone's having like a fear of travel and a fear of adventure subsequently because of that and it, it kind of sucks what um oh, go ahead so i was about the about stem cell um 
I would implore people to understand that there's, well, maybe not so much Mexico, although <laughs> there are a few good physicians in Mexico, but I would say that the, the horror stories are real from that world um, that a lot of people hear. And yeah, I just speak plain. It's nothing against it. It just seems that there's a lot of horror stories that come out of Mexico related to medical tourism. Colombia's restrictions and how they do their system and how they regulate. They don't like gringos that much. People like myself and, and my and American me. staff is gringo. Yeah, they're not, they're not overly happy, not in a bad way. They're just businesses. They don't, they want to cultivate their own and grow their own business. It's not against us. It's just, hey, you know, you're starting a company, but you're based in the U.S. and you have your staff. Um, it takes a lot of time. They're very restrictive. Um, I would say much more restrictive in the right manner than the United States is for the political matter, right? You, you don't get things approved here because there's somebody's hand in somebody else's pocket getting paid. Down there, they just hold you up for two years because they want to make sure that you ain't coming in and doing something stupid. Wow. They don't want to, they don't want to go back to narco world. They don't want to have these kinds of things happen. So they're very, very, very protective. They're picky. It's like how a woman should be when she first dates and, and meets a guy. You got to hold out, make sure he's worth your time and make sure he's not going to ruin your land. Right. Don't use Tinder. Don't use Tinder. Swipe one what way is, or the other. <laughs> what's, the, anyway. what's the youngest patient? Do you call them patients? Do you have a special term for them? Oh, they're patients. They're patients. What's the youngest yeah. that you've worked with? Um, we've had some 19, 11 year olds. Um, we, there is a potential of like working soda pop. a couple younger. Yeah. I mean, look, at the end of the day, they become adults real quick when they have severe injuries. They sure do. It's such a humbling experience for, for everybody, but especially children, they become adults overnight. Mm -hmm. And what about the oldest? Say that again. What about the oldest? You know, I don't know if I have an exact number for that, but we've had people in their seventies um, and eighties and, and they do come, um, for all kinds of things from arthritis to, just general rejuvenation, um, you know, their travel. Yeah, right. We do face and hair. We do all those things too. You know, Life is short. If you need it, get it. You know, it's, it's, there's so much judgment around what individuals do with their body. And it's like, I mean, especially if it's an everyday person, go ahead, do your thing. You know, I get more frustrated when it's like the Kardashians resurfacing their faces and all, the, all these other girls want to follow suit. I have a strong theory that, you shouldn't get new lips until you learn another language. I think you should be bilingual before you get, you know, another set of lips. You should provide a language for that extra set of lips. That's a good standard. Like, I'm sure that's in your stand-up somewhere. I've not watched you. I should put it in there somehow. Time. You should get that in there because that, I mean, that would just be a what? Moment. Like, Whoa. Like, what? Did she, what? Like, she just blew her minds away. Uh, you, you comedians might have, uh, you guys might have fodder for the next, 20 years oh my this lord i mean the, the amount of fodder I, time first of all i don't even know what time is anymore it feels like there's been lifetimes between march and now but definitely there's there's so much going on to you know joke about and like like i was telling you before we started that i this is the first time in my life i've had actual time and energy to put effort into the other areas of my career that I've wanted to pursue, like Alzheimer's activism and advocacy and, well, not, you know, <laughs> being an activist for Alzheimer's, but for the research and awareness of it and, you know, talking to people who are leaders in their field and, and taking a more real approach for people because when I shared things that was going on with my father, that was the the most engagement I had from all of my fans and friends ever because so many people are experiencing these things and I didn't have time to put effort into it. And so now it's, it's nice that I'm able to like sit down with professionals like you and create some hope that can fuel people's willpower to find and seek out alternative therapies to help their own individual and familial healing. Um, so for these people who are listening that are interested, do want to take the chance and get into stem cell therapy what are a few things they can expect maybe in general but if you would prefer to expect uh describe what they can expect from your own company what can they expect from their first stem cell therapy maybe preparation and day one yeah i think that what you're gonna what you should expect is a very family oriented environment like we we take every patient as if they're part of our family at all times um, you're going to be handheld and, and a lot of education. 
Um, it's, I just tell people we don't, our patients come through a bit of a sales process. Um, it's a qualification process and, and it's not because we don't want to help everyone. We just want to make sure people understand, you know, we give them a patient advocate, the patient advocate gives them, drowns them in information, answers all of their questions, tries to figure out, we do a consult with our doctors in Medellin. So you actually have a zoom call with our medical, you do telemedicine like they're doing everywhere now. And you get that one-on-one -on -one and you get to talk. And one of my doctors is there to answer all of your questions. And if you need more questions, we put them back on the phone with you again and answer more questions. And, and we want you to feel comfortable. And that's our number one goal is to make sure that before you make any kind of commitment or decision, that this is the right fit for you. We have people that we tell no to. Um, and what are those disorder. scenarios? Hmm? What are those scenarios where you say no? Why have you said no? Um, we can't, we can't work with cancer patients unless they're five years out. From and why is that? Well, stem cells has a tendency, at least for the most part, the speculation is that stem cells could enhance somebody's cancer. Right. right? You're talking about a cell that duplicates. Well, what is cancer? It's a, ca it's a cell that's out of control. It overwhelms the system um, right. in simplest of terms. So we, we tell people that you need to be five years in remission. I think that most companies tell you three. I mean, it could be wrong, but we, we take it in an extreme. Um, it's not always fun to have that conversation with people because they get excited, but they also don't always tell us that, you know, we, it's not something that we're asking. We do HIPAA laws. We follow all the rules that we have to, when they talk to our doctors, sometimes they bring it up. Um, sometimes there's heart conditions um, that could cause challenges for people. And we want to make sure that, you know, there's certain things like excess fluid in areas like that that you might add into somebody's system that could cause them to have a problem. We don't want that to be the case either. So we're very cautious about it. You can expect to be thoroughly diagnosed. Why, why wouldn't you, uh, you said you don't ask about cancer. Why, why isn't that if it's, I don't personally, because it's, it's, for me, it's a personal situation. You oh, I see. Conversation with a doctor about. Right. Not, not that we, you know, people tell us all the time, right. I'm this, I'm that. And that's for them to say to us and we can react. But a lot of times on our side, we, we, we acknowledge the HIPAA and the privacy thing. So you can expect us to be one very private with your information. That's one thing we do very, very well. You'd expect my doctors to give you a thorough you know, conversation as far as, uh, you've been concerned. I think most people from what I've heard, I've experienced it, but from what I've heard from our patients is that they're amazed at how much attention they get. Yeah. We don't get that over here. <laughs> We're literally put on conveyor belts and just injected with vaccines and AIDS medication. You're like, I'm just here for a sneeze. They're like, we don't know. We don't know. It's amazing to me. And, and, I get it. We're a microcosm. Like we're, we're a small clinic with, you know, people we can give that attention. We only have 15 patients at a time at our facility per week. So it's not like, you know, we have 600 other people we're pushing through a revolving door. That, that's not what it is, but the attention to detail, we've found issues with our patients who have been diagnosed with other things in the, in the United States and then come to us um, and go get more MRIs, get more things. We, we, the, the doctors get a chance to bilaterally diagnose and look at them and they're like, Hmm, that doesn't seem right. And we'll take you down and we'll have them do MRIs and we'll have them do this. And we're like, your medical records say that. And next thing we know, we're finding out we had a patient who um, we found out had an impingement on the spinal cord. Nothing we could fix. We still were able to treat, but nothing we could fix. And we're like, you need, it's like, but I've been to every, like, I've been to three different Western medicine doctors in LA, very high profile, who have told me I don't have an issue. A couple of weeks later, he's having fusion because that issue was detrimental and there was dark spots on the spine. We found it. And we're like, and, and it's documented, it's talked about in our YouTube channel. And it's something that we, we take pride in. And so you can expect to get that when you visit, um, as well as some really good food. Yeah, really I was going to say, time. some food. <laughs> oh, you can hang God. out with Soda Pop and climb the stairs. Dude, heck yeah. Like, got to pay, I'd be, I'd be dead halfway up. So I, I would not, too. Like, I, I climb the stairs in my apartment complex. I'm like, <gasps> man, did they, are they getting rid of oxygen because we can't afford it? Is that, is my apartment <laughs> depleting thing? the oxygen because of COVID? Is there less? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we're, we're, that's, you know, explore it and get all the information we can possibly give you is what we're all about. And, and we, it's about your decisions and you as a, as a person, how far you want to take your health and what you want to go after. But that's really what we're, we're here to do. And um, I think we've done a really good job of setting that standard with our staff as well as with the patients that have already gone down. And for people who maybe just want some information, tell them where your YouTube page is so that they can get a little preliminary introduction into the BioX Cell. Wait, don't tell me because it's like accelerator, BioAccelerator. There you go. See, we got through it. 59 Meanwhile, minutes takes me and 36 times. seconds. You can note that. Um, <laughs> I had stem cells. I'm getting injected right now. 
you might want to start with that at the beginning. Um, that would this is what happened at the end. Now let's talk about the rest of it. Uh, it's bioaccelerator.com. You can go to the website, um, search bioaccelerator in YouTube. It'll come up. You'll be able to see our logo and all of our our videos that are there. Um, you can follow us on social media, Instagram, and all those areas. It's bioaccelerator as well at bioaccelerator. Um, yeah, it's uh, and we try to give out tell as much of the stories as we possibly can from our patients as well as give out as much information and. I would tell people that we're just at, we're just at the beginning of a very unique time. Um, we're also, you know, although tail end of this conversation, but we're also in COVID clinical trials for COVID-19 pneumonia, um, which is something that uh, is probably an entirely other discussion on its own. But um, very few people were in a study with the University of Miami um, to do this. Uh, we have, uh, you know, if you don't know, when you hear about the ventilators, which a lot of people don't really, you know, they get yeah, a lot of insight what into is the whole thing? what's I mean, going on. If you have some a few more minutes, we can totally get into a little bit of this. What, so what is the issue with the ventilators in your professional opinion? Why are some people okay on them? Why do some people die? What, is it a useful thing or is it a detrimental thing? Um, that's a unique question. So from my perspective, ventilators, they're being used properly. Nobody ever going to my side of healthcare management, right? And working in hospitals. <laughs> There's not a project plan for masses of people showing up who all of a sudden need to use ventilators. Okay? That just, it's, as much as you want to plan the worst case scenario, I would bet that I couldn't find a single page of how to inventory for a pandemic in today's world. <laughs> which which is, I mean, we learn backwards. I mean, that's, it's just the retrospective reality of evolution. The shit happens and we're like, well, we could have used that 200 years ago. We could have. And, 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 that, and I think that the problem is, is one, there's not one, the understanding that it, it does impact the cardiovascular system heavily and the lungs are heavily impacted by COVID. Um, it's no joke. My brother's a nurse. He works in ER um, he's in Seattle and it's no joke. Like the, the disease, it's not a, it's not a fallacy. Not everybody's going to die from it. You know, you, you're not going to be comfortable and you don't want it. It's not something that's going to make you feel good to say, Hey, I had it. Like not a badge of honor, but it'll make you pretty damn sick. And it's not going to make you feel very good. Um, where we're coming into play is really on that, that COVID pneumonia side, which is causing people to have to go on ventilators where the, the lungs are, really, really damaged, very bad. You know, that pneumonia is what, that's what kills people is that the lungs get damaged. They don't have the proper time to heal. That's why we have to put them on ventilators because the lungs isn't filling with oxygen and it's not di dif uh, diffusing through the system properly. Um, where we come into play with, with stem cells and where we see the benefits and, and China has as well is through IV. One of the negatives of stem cells, and a lot of people have used it against people in our space, particularly in comp competition, business competition, well, you lose, you put them into the, into the IV and then you lose them in the lungs. Up until about eight, nine months ago, that was pretty true. Now, when they're hitting the lungs, when 60% of the cells are going into the lungs and circulating around, that's helping to heal and reduce the inflammation. That <laughs> Again, I'm back to my original question of why, why does it take me having a conversation? No offense to you. I'm, you're obviously, you're well-versed and you're professional and this is what you do and you're, it's your world. But it, it frustrates me that it takes having this conversation with you to, to even know that that's a option in our, in today's world and everything that's happening and how fast this disease has totally debilitated our economy and families and businesses. You know, I think that it's, uh, it, it's, again, I think it's, it's about being educated. Like I, I, I try for my, me personally, and people hate it about me is I try to see both sides. I grew up in central Washington, right? In, in Washington state, people would tell you that that's a blue state. I would tell you, nah, actually it's a blue state on the other side of the Cascades. It's more of a red state on the other side. And I grew up right in farm country where it was important to, you know, kind of treat your neighbor as if, and I don't think that the world that it controls the environment that wants people to be healthy, wants to treat their neighbor the same as they want to fill their pockets. And that's a, that's a shame. And, and that's, you know, we hear about all these other things that are going on out there that this drug, that drug, and I'm glad vaccines are going to come. We're smart enough to figure that out. But early on, China did stem cells on patients who were in. Uh, that's on, right. I remember hearing about yeah. that. And so it did get some pub. Um, and that's But it just really fizzled weird. out. It's not in the daily news. It, it's, and I'm like obsessively <laughs> scouring. <laughs> 
the news so much so that it's affecting my sleep which is also you know a an issue with alzheimer's but stem cells i haven't seen it be a popular you know a trending topic and you would think in this covid world if covid is so terrible and it is causing us to shut down and businesses to close you would think that powers that be are doing every possible thing and approach they can to combat this issue so it's it's just um it's really it's really the fact that you can't provide again it's not about there's other clinics in the world that utilize the same kind of stem cells as us so it's not just about bio accelerator about my company but it's really about what is being done outside of the u.s that i think scares the u.s right you you from outside you ask columbia you ask stem cells in a foreign country that small amount of of skepticism or a great question is what brings the fear to everybody I think it's a fear from everyone else that, oh my God, maybe some other country could solve our problem. Like, no, we're the United yeah. States, we should solve our problem. And that's, that's not- It's like a weird ego. It's like, a, it's like ego and ethnocentrism mixed into one that's totally fogging your ability to just produce a result. I mean, look at Israel. Israel's a leader in marijuana research and even, you know, things that are evolving with the with Alzheimer's disease. Israel is like, you know, a, a front runner in in taking risks and being progressive in their approach to medicine surrounding Alzheimer's and in the effects of marijuana and all of that. So it's it, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe it is America. Their fear of other people solving problems. It's just it's like everybody f stop fucking looking at it from the wrong perspective. And maybe it's too much of a hippie approach to be like, yo, can't we all just find some way to have these therapies available to people it, it, in my own life in my own struggles i realize the value of having a plethora of options i mean it takes it takes a fucking village to keep this bitch going through a day let me tell you i've got mushroom tea i've got mushrooms i've got dogs exercise weed cbd weed it's it takes a whole house full of of therapy to keep me just on my level basis and i don't even have lucky enough i don't have a an ailment that really needs something like that again i i just i feel like one of the exciting things for me being involved in this industry is that we are ahead of the curve and that when COVID happened we could mobilize and do something we have partnerships in Argentina, working with people in Argentina. We had, like I said, our partnership in Miami. Like we were able to actually do something. We didn't have to sit on the sidelines. Like I had to sit back and watch. We were, you know, yeah, we're providing cells. Um, it's not the most glorious thing, but at the level that which the power and the potency of what we have to be able to provide it, at least to see if there's a chance, um, was big. Again, I I watch. We align very well in the in the world of of, of where, marijuana. Like I watch how you know as. Demographics change, Washington and Nevada and LA, yeah. California, and all these, as they change, it's slowly becoming adopted and, and people are starting to see it. And um, I know for a fact that that's, that adoption is hard for people, but as those individuals who are making those decisions and helping them happen, continue to be educated, me coming and talking with you, you taking the chance to talk with me, not even knowing me, right? Two years later, just being able to say, I'm gonna talk with Mike about stem cells and Alzheimer's, but other things, that continuing to get the word out and continuing to keep the pressure against it, Finding more people, I didn't have to sneak my way on the Joe Rogan podcast, right? Like I snuck it on, like like I snuck it on by having Henry talk about it. Like you know, there, it's planned. Like I worked my ass off to, to get to know Henry. Henry and I are good friends now. But the more that people learn about the media, from the people who are doing it and the stories that we're telling, is the the quicker and better the, the adoption is going to happen. You know, nobody yeah. wanted marijuana, you know, legalized, but it's real close to getting there. Like, and if it doesn't, every state's going to do it. And how do you, what do you call it? Yeah, what are you going to do? What you gonna, you're just going to put everybody in jail? Everyone's caring. Yeah, Grandmas are. Illegal. What are you going to do now? Like, oh, okay, well, you're going to catch somebody <laughs> driving across borders and that's where you're going to get them? Yeah. It's, you're not going to waste your time with that. Let's stop wasting our time with putting people in jail for smoking plants. Let's just fucking stop. Let's stop. Yeah, and I, I think that this medicine is at a level where, you know, as people, um, Talk about it more and understand it more that, um, you know, maybe COVID will be that tipping point. Maybe it's just a matter of other diseases and issues that come around. I know that it can help to save lives. Um, and it can help to improve the quality of life. And for me, that's, that is the core 
motivating factor is the is the quality of life because so many people don't have access to the basic fundamentals of a a life filled with quality you know quality there's people in in america who don't have clean water i mean no homes and they can't get health care it's it's just it's it's heartbreaking to me so that's why i wanted to chat with you and get to know the the process of stem cell therapy because it's so i know a little bit about it but also more importantly to people who are listening who I know are struggling because I get the emails, I get the DMs, you know, I, I maybe it's <laughs> my fault for starting a series called Dr. Peluso where I tell them I am a board uncertified doctor of the school of life and I give, I give advice, mainly relationship advice. advice. <laughs> it's brilliant. Come on, so people look we're, to we're, me for, for medical advice. But if I can use my marketing skills and you can use your comedy and your comedic and your 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 bluntness to bluntness on both sides. Yeah, bluntness. <laughs> All right. There you go. To to enhance people's lives and what the hell else would we do with ourselves? Especially stuck inside of four walls all freaking day long. I mean, amen to that. Let's tell these people one more time where they can find information and the YouTube page. Yeah, so you can go bioaccelerator.com. Um, you can visit the website uh, and then you can go to the YouTube channel as well and just search bioaccelerator and YouTube and, you know, take the time to view. Um, there's lots of stories, you know, our focus, they all come from my, me, myself and my staff. We're not a big company. This isn't, this isn't big pharma. We're, we're a very small group of individuals who are very passionate about what we do. Um, my sales team is, there's five of them. My design team, there's two of them. You know, it's, it's a very small group. Um, we keep it that way on purpose. But do your research, inquire. Um, we don't charge anybody for anything. That's not how we work. Like until you decide to go down and decide to make a commitment, then financially that, that conversation happens. But I don't want, you know, it's unfortunate that the one thing that we didn't talk about, but the one thing people don't realize is the insurance doesn't cover it. I wish it did. That's another kind of goes in line with our whole conversation here. Like yep. why could you, why is something so available that you can't get because of certain things? And we're working on angles to help with that. I mean, if I can, if I can Robin Hood up, and, and still from Peter to pay Paul and help people get healthy. And then I'm going to find a way to do it. Uh, but yeah, go to bioaccelerator.com, go to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, all those great things. Um, hopefully we can get you down um, and you can give a first hand experience. Yeah. I want to try something. I want to try it once, once the, you know, the, the current state is a little bit less hectic. I'm definitely going to be like, Hey, I want to come down and get some stem cells in my butthole. I mean, not really my butthole, but I mean, just to point out, we'll be in good shape <laughs> just to get the overall health exam would be nice to know that there's like a hands-on approach as opposed to me just going in for, you know, going into my dentist. And the next thing I know I'm in a full radiation jacket for some reason. So it would be nice to get that hands-on family approach. So I, 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 I implore people to check it out and he's right. Do your research, inquire, ask questions and and hopefully this can provide some hope for you guys to dig down deep and find some willpower to go on another day when it may feel desperate and completely impossible to get better and get healthier. So thank you so much for taking time to talk with me. I'm, I'm excited after two years. I knew it would come to fruition when it was meant to and where it would make the most impact and I think I think we nailed it. Uh, hey, sounds good to me. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank Absolutely you so much, Mike. Go. Cool.